Today, the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide is celebrating and giving emphasis to the importance of religious liberty. Today is dubbed Religious Liberty Sabbath across the world of Adventism. As we celebrate this day, I take this opportunity on behalf of the Guyana Conference to wish each of us the best and to share some thoughts on the issue of liberty of conscience. Article 18 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights states, everyone shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right shall include freedom to have or to adopt a religion or belief of his choice, and freedom either individually or in community with others, and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in worship, observance, practice, and teaching. This article guarantees expressed rights in the practice of religious conviction and guarantees protection to all in this practice of our religious convictions. It should also be noted that this freedom guarantees not only the right to practice one's religious beliefs, but also the right to change one's religion without intimidation or harassment. It is therefore apropos to conclude with Roger Williams that each person is entitled through the medium of conscience to communicate with divine in matters spiritual and that no person or authority is entitled to exert force or otherwise coerce the sacred haven of conscience. My conclusion is that to violate conscience is to violate God's work and man's dignity. From this core thought, Williams elaborated on the primacy of conscience, advocating for the freedom of conscience on equal terms for all people, regardless of race or gender. The free exercise of religion is like a fragile flower. It must receive the most vigorous protection possible and the most gentle care to be found. Within it, freedom of conscience thrives or is throttled. In the Bible, the book of Revelation chapter 13 identifies a political power that will arise in the last days causing people to worship another religio-political power. Religion and politics are symbolized in Revelation 17 by an apostate church being sustained by the state. The persecuting power of this union of church and state is illustrated by the woman who becomes drunk with the blood of the saints. At this point, we must note that one of the greatest violations of our times would be the erosion of this very freedom which should guarantee the said rights. Every institution of society will be utilized to oppress and take away the rights of those who want to be obedient to their conscience. We've already begun to see the manifestations of this erosion of freedom as we witness some who propagate and perpetuate alternative lifestyles, which is within their rights to do. However, the church and by extension religious organizations must not be bullied into affirming the alternative lifestyle choices against our wishes. Grave violations of conscience is evident when we see employers in public and private employment entities who deny employees time requested to perform their religious rights. The list of religious intolerance and the stripping away of liberties of conscience is growing longer in our fragile global society, thus making peaceful coexistence a fleeting fantasy of the masses who just desire peace. Alternately, however, we encounter a God whose kingdom is built upon freedom of choice, even when those choices go against him. This is demonstrated by the numerous biblical occurrences where he could have used his power to put down uprisings and destroy despots. But instead, he extended a hand of grace and unconditional love. While he was never in agreement with their behaviors, he still found ways to show his love for them. The government of God is based on freedom of choice. God chose to create humanity also with the power to choose. He himself declared in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 and 19, See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, blessing and the cursing. Therefore choose life, 
that both thou and thy seed may live. It is not within the powers of humans to take away that sacred choice. In fact, every institution in a healthy and functional society should protect the sacred freedoms of conscience. The price paid for these freedoms is immeasurable. This price is beyond what money or any material possession may procure. As I close this discussion, I urge upon you the words of Patrick Henry in his now famous speech which spurred Virginia to join the fight for independence from Britain. He declared, life is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. We owe it to a functional and peaceful society to protect the sacred liberty of conscience. Happy Religious Liberty Day.